Hi everyone! In today's video we're going to go over my bouquet making station. I keep it simple and I keep it easy and some of the pieces that I use I also use at the farmers market so things double up which of course is always good for the budget. So let's get into the video. So here's my bouquet making station. Now you'll actually recognize this area if I come out and walk around this way and show you that it is actually one side of our garage that up until last week had a car in it but because of the flower wagon is now up on the road the car that was in here is actually now in here and the car that was in here is now under the gazebo you'll also notice that I'm starting to harden off all of my dahlias so let's walk back up to the bouquet making station and we're going to start over here where the wheelbarrow is now, which used to be under the gazebo. And it's holding some, the pots of now my dried poppy pods because I use them in bouquets. It's also holding a stack of these, which I use in my... Oh, well, I'll just show you when, when I get to that. I'm blanking out on what it's called. The, um, the plastic pots that the bouquets go in. I can get two of these in each pot with a little bit of water in so that if people want to take their bouquet away with water, they can just take it with that container. Now my bouquet making station is created using two folding tables, both of which I take to the farmer's market. So they uh, become uh, double duty. I also have a folding chair that goes to the farmer's market. Another double duty. On the L that sticks out here, this is where I cut my sleeves for the bouquets. I have it up against this partition of the garage so that it can be held here. I have my square, steel square, for um, ripping off the pieces. And what I do oops, is I just pull this out to the end of this table. And then I have a mark here, which is 18 inches. And if I tear it at that mark, I have an 18 inch square. If I move it down to where the center of the table is, where it folds, that's the 36 inch mark, which now becomes another 18 inch square. So I can do the same thing, just tear it off and put it in my stack there. We'll just roll this up. Put it back against the garage. Put this against there to hold it down. Once I have a stack of however many sleeves that I want to make, the next thing I do is I'll take one. I'll fold it in a, so that it's it's got really low peaks from a mountain, if you want to think of it that way. Crease it, and then, because I can't cut with one hand, I cut one already. Oops, hang on. I cut fairly high, and then I fold these over, crease that nicely, and then this is what can then wrap around the bouquet on both sides like that. So when I make the bouquets, I don't use rubber bands. Rubber bands just never break down. They stick around forever. So I like to use twine. I learned that from Noble Flowers, thank you. Now, I've got another mark on the table, at the edge of the table, so from here, to here is the length of twine that I want to cut so I can just unroll it to the end of the table and cut that and I have the length of twine that I want for the bouquet. Now I use two. One, once I've created the arrangement in my hand, I'll tie the twine right up underside the flowers at the top of the stems really tight. I'll show you how I do that in another video later on in the season. And then that means that when people take the bouquet home, they can put it in the vase as is. They don't have to take the twine off. And it keeps its shape, the bouquet. So people really like that. You also don't see the twine because it's just a natural color. So after I've tied the bouquet really nicely, 
and then I've wrapped my sleeve around it, I'll then take the second piece of twine and tie that sleeve into place roughly in about the same place. Make sure that the threads of the twine, like the hanging parts of the tie, don't come too low so that they don't sit in water and wick water up into the paper and get it all soaking wet. So that's the side of my bouquet making station. I keep a gap purposefully between it and the actual area that I make the bouquets because if any water gets on this table, and it does, it's not going to go onto my paper station and get the paper all wet. So there's always a nice gap for the uh, water to run down onto the concrete pad, which then slopes out down to the driveway. So on the actual area where I make a bouquet, I can't show you how I make a bouquet right now because we just finished a bunch of wind and rainstorms and it's not like I had a lot of flowers anyway to make bouquets. I had camellias. Uh, I basically sold all the camellias that were blooming and with the rain and wind storms, no new buds were opening up, so I'll have to wait for that to happen. I had a nice bucket of cherry blossoms, which I have here for prettiness. I can't use them anymore. They're too old because they've been sitting around since uh, last week. And um, again, because of the rain and wind storms that happened all week, I, I think we cut those late Sunday and uh, haven't, haven't been able to use them at all. But they are pretty. They were going with the camellias and then selling with the camellia bouquets and those that all did really well with all the camellias that were blooming. Now what I'll do is, is I'll have of course a, a pot here with flowers in it. Uh, I'll have other buckets with, with uh, water in it with flowers in it so that I can just pull from each bucket that has flowers in it to make the bouquet. And then I'll lay the bouquet across the top of a bucket while I tie it so that I'm not squashing the flowers and then take it over to my wrapping station. I also have in my bouquet making station, as you can see here, a selection of little vases. I've got a little amber one there, vintage amber one, and then this little ceramic one and a few others. And then down here, a few bigger ones and smaller ones. And you can see here, I've got the beginning of an arrangement, which may be able to go up onto the, not like this, but may be able to go up on the road uh, later on today. I just cut a few uh, blue anemones and a pansy and put it in here just so that you can get the idea. Now, what I wanted to show you with that is, is if you're cutting a bunch of small stemmed flowers, I have this pail and in here I have two yogurt containers that I can put just a little bit of water in because small stemmed flowers don't need much to sit in much water. Otherwise, they'll just, they'll just drown the suckers. So if I only have like an inch or two of water in here, this will still kept, be kept held. You know, all of these things can, this, the pansies would sit in a different one. They can all sit in there in water until I'm ready to make an arrangement. So that's why I like to have a pail with a couple of, I use these for sweet peas a lot too. This really helps for making small stemmed arrangements. And of course, small stemmed arrangements are perfect for short little vases like this one. This is a handmade vase. It's actually signed on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a signature on the bottom of it there. So that will be really special for someone. All of these vases I thrifted over the course of the winter. I do, that's one thing that I do once a week in the winter is thrift for vases because I do sell an awful lot of flower arrangements. And as someone who has a very small scale flower farm, any way that you can add something else into the dimension of um, monetary gain, that's perfect. I'll just put this back underneath there. Now, once I've made a bouquet, tied up my bouquets, put them into a flower pail that has two of the milk jugs in it with some water in it. It's time to clean up because there's usually a lot of mess up here. So what I do then is I just take a broom or a dustpan. I just have the broom out here right now and I can sweep the table and I can just sweep it right off the end or it falls into this low plastic tub that I have. 
I can also sweep the floor and then use our snow shovel, which is clearly not getting used anymore. Just don't fall over. As a dustpan, just sweep everything up onto this snow shovel. Put it all into my tub here that then has all the plant debris in it that's left over, which is usually quite a bit more than that. And then all that plant debris can go into the flower bed that I'm comp direct composting right now. So that works really, really well. The other thing I have in my station, oh, I think I said that I had the poppy pods out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I keep a couple of little tables down here for small things to get out of the way. And that's it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, all I'm using is a folding chair, which you don't even need, two folding tables, uh, a roll of my craft paper, a steel square for ripping off, ripping the pieces off as I go. You don't need a big fancy paper cutter for that. And uh, and I'm good to go. And it's and it's a really nice. There's lots of airflow because I'm in the garage and it's open. We've got lights at the top of the garage right above it, so it's easy to see what I'm doing, even if it's dark outside. I didn't mention these tubs down here because basically these tubs is where I keep all my small plant pots. And the reason I keep them in Rubbermaid totes like this is because no bugs get in them. So you don't have to go and sterilize all your small garden pots and everything. Because they're in a self-contained, they're in self-contained Rubbermaid containers that um, don't have to worry about bugs getting in there and laying eggs. Now, I potted, I used, I, they're out here because I used them recently because I potted up all my um, African marigolds that are white into four-inch pots because they won't get planted for a while. The square pots have the first succession of them. You see, they're doing really quite nicely. The second ones have the second succession. They're still quite a bit smaller. Oh, see these, see these sunflowers? I just planted the seeds five days ago. That's how tall they are already. I've already planted outside the first two successions of sunflowers. Uh, this one down here, that's getting planted out possibly later on today. That one can go out next week. I'm starting another one in the seed room today. By the end of next week, the dahlias will have been completely hardened off. So they're gonna be staying out here. And once they stay out here, I'm gonna have a lot more space in my seed room. And with all that space in my seed room, I'm gonna be converting it. So you'll have to tune in next week to see what the seed room is gonna turn into. Hi, editing Ev here. I realized that I forgot to mention that these flower pails that I use for the bouquets if I can pull out away these things. You can actually get them for free at your grocery store if they have a flower department because all of their flowers come in in these pails. So they usually have, I mean, I've got, they, they gave me 200 over the course of maybe three stops. I have about 200, which of course will last me for quite a long time. So they don't cost anything and it's recycling, reusing pails that might otherwise end up, I don't know where they end up, Hopefully not in the landfill, but seriously, you don't need to go and buy yourself some pails. Go to your local gardens, or not garden center, go to your local grocery store that has a flower department and ask if you can have any of their leftover pails. If they say no, go to another one because most of them will give you their pails because they don't use them once they've taken the flowers out of them. They have no use for them. So that's just a really good top tip to have for increasing your inventory of things that you need for selling flowers without spending any money and recycling something that was already used. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you just want to say something. And until next week, bye!